maintain this speed up the hill. Worst case scenario, we can't keep up, and then we just come up a ways, and then you would, we'd, you just let her flip around in a tow mode. We just flip around. Okay. Worst case scenario. Because, yeah, I'm watching the speed here. He's going to, yeah, a knot to uh, three quarters of a knot kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I'll switch his bearing. Actually, I'll call up pretty soon. What do you think, Gabby? Just trying to maintain the speed up the hill to the next waypoint. I mean, we're going to start to come up, so that's going to limit our vertical or our horizontal speed. But Yeah, so we'll... Um, we're actually past it, so now we're in um, a whole different a data set from Sally Ride, so I have a little bit more confidence in this. So. And then I'll keep a sharp eye on the Argus sonar too ahead, and uh, if I start seeing something pretty steep, then we might have to back off and then start coming up. Oh yeah, Is that, are you are you not drifting up very well? Nav, can you drop a target for here and say nodule field? That, yeah. Yes, I can. I mean, that's your call. I don't, I don't know how it's behaving. So if you want to, you can do that. If we're collecting more rocks, I mean to do it anyway. So you could just do it now. Yeah. To, I can do that for you if you want. We got, oh, just the one left. The thing I was going to say before we uh, had that little mic snafu was uh, this um, pat this kind of saddle seems to be pretty well current scoured. It seems like the current might be coming from the west uh, from what we were seeing before we started to move pretty quickly. And that, that kind of current through the saddle between the two local peaks might be resulting in this concentration of nodules here. It's pretty dense. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we've seen a lot now. more of these in our early dives of this cruise, these nodule fields, but for sure. I haven't seen them recently. Like coral flybys. <laughs> yeah. No, there are a couple couple of boulders around that have corals on them. They must have fallen down from somewhere. There are also some very, very sparse corals and sponges that are in the knowledge hole field itself. Oh yeah, there's one kinda to the right of the lasers. Uh, sorry, okay, what was or the... Or maybe not. What was the bear? Zero two zero. Okay, okay thanks.
thing I like about this summit is that it's very broad and flat. So I'm wondering if it's just, you know, if the currents are nice and the substrate is pretty stable and solid, it could be pretty am amazing corals up there. Ooh, I hope so. Building the suspense. <laughs> and sponges too, don't want to forget them. But mostly corals. So Steve, we've looked at five seamounts now on this cruise. We're kind of nearing the end of this expedition. Do you have any like preliminary kind of thoughts or new findings? What have what have you thought of this cruise in terms of corals or really any scientific findings? I think uh, there are a lot of similarities amongst the sites, um, and I would say there are probably more differences between these seamounts and those in the remainder of the archipelago, which um, some of them can be substantial, but I think uh, the major thing that's keep, well, they're similar to each other in that we find distribution patterns along the depth of the seamount that are similar. So, you know, a lot of the, we were saying those yellow fans like Acanthogorgian, the Plexorids, they appear between 2,000 and 1,800 meters pretty consistently, um, regardless of the topography. The the deepest reaches of the seamount are also pretty similar. It seems like the south and west uh, sides of the seamount seem to have more of those mounds, um, which could suggest that you know it's the currents are different there that support these Echirian mounds and their persistence, uh, whereas on the east and northeast sides it was a little bit more current scoured i think the muddy uh substrates that we observed with the crust on them seemed to be south and west uh, and those didn't really support a lot of high diversity communities or high density communities the summits i would say are are pretty similar we find similar species uh, on all the summits there's no there was no like um really dominant species on any of the seamount summits that was distinct. Um, since all the summit depths were about the same, that's kind of what we would expect, too. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think, you know, if if we had a summit depth for one of these seamounts that was just a few hundred meters shallower, we might end up in different, different um, community compositions like we saw further west in the South Wentworth chain. Um, so I, I think, yeah, there, the similarities are in that you know, at the depths that these seamounts are restricted to, the corals are fairly similar um, to what is in the region, mm -hmm. but they're also dissimilar in that they don't have access to these shallower depths, so they're kind of just, they cap out at those com summit communities. Um, at 17, 1800 meters, so bamboo corals, primnoids, maybe chrysogorgids, uh, and reasonably high densities, large, larger communities. I would say your larger corals themselves. A lot of the jade clade and um, sparsely branching, maybe D clade or and uh, the yellow ones, the S clades. Mm -hmm. Those were very, very large at some of these seamounts, uh, which is could be indicative of you know, some sort of Stability that allows them to grow big um, and, and low disturbance. But yeah, we, uh, the thing I, w I was looking for, which I didn't see very many of, we saw a few, were these high density precious coral communities, uh, which we did see at one of the uh, at Tamana Seamount, which is a bit further west on our last cruise. Uh, we didn't see those, and I kind of expected to see a little bit of those on some of the shallower seamount summits, but we just didn't get there. Uh, I think we're just a little bit too deep. Interesting lines in the nodules here. So yep. there are like rivers of current down here that we keep moving in and out of. Like, they sort of go different directions. Um, they tend to not last for very long. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was wondering because we were we we're kind of crossing a saddle, right? Oh, okay. And 
maybe you might have you know wraparound currents or on the seamount yeah. that might be yeah a bit i feel squirrely. like I'm, I'm crossing rivers <laughs> and they're coming from each direction they alternate it's pretty wild you guys can watch it in the tether sometimes if i have to face into it i'll change direction oh yeah so it looks like it's probably coming from the east towards the west now uh yes Okay, I see it. So Kate, if you had to guess what our average, what the ship's average speed is, has been for this? Oh, you have you slowed him down? Okay. Okay. I feel like um, Herc has been moving between 0.7 and 0.9 for a lot of this. Only, only 0.9. Well, I guess we're 0.9 right now. 1.0 when I was trying to catch up because I got too far behind. Steve, I've got a follow-up question for you. Um, thank you for kind of talking us through your thoughts about this cruise. If we were to come back to these sea mounts, uh, what would you target or what would be kind of the next objectives of your expedition? What are you still curious about? Um, I, th I think, you know, th there are some open questions about how uh, patchy and uh, some of the communities on these seamounts are uh, for, from a strictly biological perspective of course uh, that you know we have done only one transect up each of these seamounts and we've kind of inferred what's on the other side of each of these seamounts based on you know all the transects we've done in aggregate um, so I think that there's probably some more lessons to be learned uh, by doing some additional survey work on more than one side of a seamount. And oftentimes that's all we have time for, but um, I think you can get a better picture of a lot of the differences in species composition, um, but also differences in substrate types by looking at different sides of a seamount. Um, the currents impact the seamount differently, depending on which side you look there. at, and that might influence how the biology is distributed. Uh, we know that seamounts are inherently patchy and uh, kind of like a mosaic of communities. And I think if you kept looking uh, and did several transects, I would say at least four, 
preferably six um, of these transects per seamount, you could probably have something resembling one of the best data sets um, in the, in this region for you know deep deep water seamount biology and biogeography. So no one's done that on seamounts in these areas where they've just picked one and gone like a true deep, deep dive into all the aspects? There have been studies done like that. Um, most notably, the ones that I am more familiar with, uh, they've been doing work like that off of Australia and New Zealand for quite a while okay. um, using things like towed cameras uh, and ROVs. Uh, so they have really good spatial analysis data uh, to support you know, how s communities are distributed across the seamount from the abyssal to summit depths. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just doing basic exploration out here, trying to figure out what the question should be. Yeah. Um, so th this is really the first step. That's a good way of thinking about it. Kind of you were wondering how long we've been down here on this dive. We launched, I think, just under 20 hours ago. So at 7 p.m. last night, that's Hawaiian Standard Time. Um, and now we are kind of moving more quickly up this slope. We have been exploring an unnamed seamount, Seamount B, uh, which is the fifth seamount we've looked at um, on this expedition. And we're moving our way up to the summit so we can explore that area. Absolutely. I did not. Say again. Um, I was hoping to just hold position and let us catch up. We can also, I guess, move forward a little bit towards waypoint 12 so we land more on this knoll. Um, I think, so the idea is to land close to 11 and then um, re-join the dive or start the on-ground and start our exploration again. Yeah. Just have the ship slow down slowly. Once we, once he finishes the move, he won't be able to hold position completely, right? So we should just kind of gradually slow down naturally or, and then, yeah. And as we get, yeah. And then once we start getting about 200 meters off, the DP will slow us down slowly as well. Yeah, it's been between 200 and 300. Where are we now? Yeah, 220. As we s slowed down a little bit, we've definitely lessened that way back, lay back. The way back, lay back. <laughs> oh, great watch name. Way back, way back. <laughs> I like that so much. I actually will suggest that to Ethan for a song. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard heard the quarantine album yet. Oh, there I've heard a couple songs from it. It's excellent. I mean, as we've come to expect from Starboard Larboard. Yes. The finest band on Nautilus <laughs> ever, ever produced. <laughs> And the only band. <laughs> yeah. There is another band that made a whole album about Nautilus. What? Yep. Who well, is it? Well, I don't know. Bob was playing us the uh, the Nautilus theme song the other day. Oh, I do remember something about that.
I think I think it's on YouTube if you, if you searched uh, EV Nautilus theme song. I think there's a recording of it. Oh, I want to look that up. I wonder if I can find the lyrics. I'm going to start moving the ship, slowing the ship down. Okay. Don't put us too far away. So, Ashley, what are your key takeaways from... Ooh. Yeah, we're not done yet, but what what are what are your, your like highlights of your internship so far? Um, that's a great question. I would say definitely sitting next to Science Steve and learning about <laughs> corals. <laughs> you don't have to say that. <laughs> no, really, I didn't know anything about deep sea corals before coming on board. I'd just known some preliminary stuff, so I feel like I've learned a lot about like their habitat a lot of different species and just being able to handle them in the lab has been really awesome. Um, and just all of the deep sea fauna in general has been really, really incredible. Um, learning more about sea stars and all the different types of like Can you come up real quick? sponges has been really fun. I feel like I've also learned a lot about exploration and a lot of geology stuff too. It's been a really amazing experience. What's your favorite part? Watch, van watch, data data lab, or uh, wet lab? Uh, well, data, data lab is out. Um, yeah, or data entry. I mean, data entry isn't isn't terrible. It's <laughs> you know it has to be done. It's a very important part of the uh, the process. But definitely working in the the wet lab has been super super fun. Just seeing it on screen is great and learning about it, but actually getting to hold it and experience it in person is is really key. Is a uh, I mean, you could have worse offices, right? <laughs> Definitely. You know, with worse views. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seeing the sunset every night has been wonderful. Yeah, Ashley, you've been out photographing birds and sunsets. Yeah. It's been fun to see you do that. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so much. It's nice just, like, to be out in the ocean because, you know, I spend a lot of time... Uh, moved to Victoria and I spent a lot of time in the city. So sometimes we get nice sunsets. Um, other times it's it's kind of hard to get out of the city and just enjoy nature. But this has been a really, really welcome break from that. So mm -hmm. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed being out at sea, getting to know people. It's been a very, very great experience. I think sunsets are just so different when you have a 360 yeah. ocean view around you, you know? Definitely. And the moon coming up at the same time, like last night, was amazing. Yeah, I think it's a full moon tonight. Oh, I yeah. Think. I should check that. It's tomorrow. Ah, uh, tomorrow. Thank you. So close. Yeah. Yeah, we've had some good moons and stars and planets, really, on this cruise. It's been neat to see. Yeah. have been seeing Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter every night just after sunset. Yeah, it's been really clear, which has been amazing. Someone asked if we've seen any green flash at sunset. I don't think anyone has on this cruise, although no. someone mentions it every sunset. Are we going <laughs> to see it? But I think we've had clouds like right at the horizon. Yeah. So the sun's been setting, but right there, it's a little cloudy. Yeah, there might have been a very, very small one the other night, but I think it was debatable whether or not it was the imagination or just our eyes were burning from staring at the sun. So I think every green flash is debatable, yeah, right? That's fair. <laughs> I've never seen it. In 
uh, what year was it? 20. Was anyone out else out here for the solar eclipse? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was by that. Yeah, that was. Um, Off Oregon? Yeah, we were just yeah. coming out of Astoria, I think. Yeah. I remember that. That was cool. Everybody out on deck wearing funny sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a great picture. Of yeah, I know the picture you're talking about. <laughs> Looking one. back at everybody. Everyone's like slack jawed on the deck. Yeah, everyone's. <laughs> A little overboard with the excitement in the photo. It was pretty funny. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. It was cool. We had a great lunar eclipse at the beginning of this deployment. Yeah, that was seems like ages ago, but that was yeah. that was fun. It was just like a month ago. Change. So the next. Uh, Thinking very far ahead, the next rock depth is around 19, 1980 meters or so. That's not that far ahead. Yeah, so I'm thinking uh, to avoid uh, having a you know summit situation where we can't find a rock again. Uh, maybe somewhere between 11 and 12 is there going to be our rock waypoint okay. target. But we'll get settled out before we start to think about that. Ashley, we have a follow-up question for you. Although you have been at sea for your marine mammal observations, but first time on Nautilus, has it been weird being so far away from land and not seeing land for a couple of weeks? Or have you enjoyed that aspect? Um. In some ways it is weird, but I, I generally really enjoy being out at sea. It's just very, very calming for me to just look at the water for a little while and enjoy it, soak it in. And just all of the wide open space is so, so, so nice <laughs> after being in the city for a while. Um, yeah, there are some things obviously that I do miss about land, but you know, we're out here for a certain amount of time. So my mentality is to just enjoy it and soak it in. That's a great mentality for all things. <laughs>
Am I seeing things or are there like pink pink globules in the water? Yeah, I see one just bottom center. That was, oh, was that a coral? I don't know. Bridge. I thought now. it was, yeah. A little they're like gone now. Translucent little blobs. Yeah, um, blobs of pink. Can you continue forward at 0 0.2 knots, bearing 355? It will be 100 meters. Thank you. Um, all right, you guys are getting close. You're about 100 meters off from where we want to set down. Or sorry, 100 meters in elevation and 200 meters in distance. Oh, great. Ashley, you got a big thank you for your answers from your mom and your uncle Eric. <laughs> Oh, you want to give your mom a shout out? <laughs> Hi, mom. Hi, Uncle Eric. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's sweet. Yep. Very happy to know that they're they're listening and tuning in. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see some cool animals for them soon. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Crossing my fingers. <laughs> very much on the edge of what I can keep up with here. So Steve, when we hit bottom, it will be approximately a half a kilometer from the summit. Um, and so in terms of time, if we move at 0 0.2 knots, it will be an hour and a half. 0 0.3 knots, about an hour. So I think we'll be landing between probably right at midnight UTC, maybe a little earlier. Um, so that will okay. that helps you with timing at all. So Landing at waypoint 11? Yes. Yeah in the area. And all the calculations are made from waypoint 11. Great. Yeah, that'll, that should be great. Perfect timing. I think it will work out well. Oh. Uh, the transit took a little bit longer, but we also extended it and weren't quite making one knot. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we decided to go up to waypoint 11 because I wasn't seeing a ton of stuff on this slope. It's pretty much just talus debris. Yep, I switched them back to 10 meters. That's good to clarify because I've been switching back and forth. <laughs> it's just easier to count when it's 50 meters. <laughs> yeah.
We've got some viewers wondering if we're going to be doing any exploration outside of the Pacific anytime soon. Um, and probably not for a while. We are going to be out here in the Pacific for the next few years. Honolulu is going to be our home port. Um, and since a lot of these places we like to dive are pretty long transits from there, we plan to be here for the next few years. Um, this is the last cruise of our 2021 expedition, but we will be starting our 2022 expedition in February. So pretty, pretty close to now. Um, and a few people wondering um, where we'll be diving and we will be um, releasing our expedition schedule um, on the nautiluslive.org website probably in soon into the new year. Um, some of those cruises will be ROV dives, others will be mapping expeditions, so we'll have a bit more details um, when we release that schedule. How fast is the ship moving right now? Um, it is at 0 0.2 knots. Okay. Fast enough to make me fall over as I stood up. <laughs> Steve, will you say your rock sampling strategy again? I cannot remember. Yeah, so um, pretty much anywhere now where we start to settle out, uh, where we can start to do a rock collection or start to look for a rock collection, front row can let me know. All right. Um, but yeah, we've, we've passed our depth a little bit, but that's okay. We just want to make sure that we are in a good position to get a good rock and don't have to pick um, something quickly because we're getting pushed or pulled. Roger. Thank you. There we go. Kind of where we expected to find the biology. Maybe not an explosion, but r ripples. Teasers. Ripples leading up to... The explosion, maybe. Yes. Yeah, definitely seeing some more corals. Go ahead. And kind of similar. Go ahead. Similar corals and sponges to the seamount communities we observed previously on other sites. Um, these sparsely branching bamboo corals, uh, primnoid fans. Can hold that position while he does it? Paragorgia colonies, bubblegum coral. Some of these sponges, uh, the stocked sponges. Okay, so um, as I was hearing uh, you talk about the rock collection, Steve, um, yeah. I heard you say that you don't want to be rushed by a moving ship. Um, but I think we also have talked about wanting to keep the ship moving um, to make sure that we get to our goal. Okay. Um, so that's sort of the tension going on right here, but yeah. there's also a lot of rocks. So if we can spot them from like, if I fly at like this height or something, um, yeah. we might be able to stop them far enough off that like we can do this pretty, pretty snappily. But I think if we want to keep the ship sort of moving, even at this slow pace, there is going to be that risk of like, you know, just we got to get I the think, sample now or yeah. move on. I yeah. think the ship's going to slow as he's changing his heading back around. The ship's going to pretty much sit here for a bit, and he'll probably wa waffle a little. So okay. I think uh, 
once we keep catching up and Argus slows down. You know, we could just hold here until it gets all settled. Yeah. Get our rock collection and then. Perfect. And then get going again or something like that. Great. Bridge, now. Thanks for sorting through that, guys. Appreciate it. If we haven't already, can we hold position while you're changing heading? Perfect, thank you. Yeah, so this, this is going to be another rock water duo. Um, I think the rocks here, you're right, look pretty good from any place. Uh, your pretty much your two options are just go back into tow mode or slow down the ship. Okay. Yep, we would come up. We just come. You just kind of like let let the sticks go, and I'd flip around, and then just and then I'd haul up on Argus, and we'd come up off the bottom. Oh, can, can we denote and then uh, in the um, event log ripples here? Well, that'll. Other options really just set about the ship, right? Just get back. I think you're doing all right. I mean, we got a little behind, but I think, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's tough. Like, yeah, you can alternate. You can try and find that little. Sorry, I was not talking. Uh. Trying, trying to find that sort of little sweet spot if, if it's there, you know, to, yeah. to, to be come. able to do both at the same time. Like just a right. little bit, you know what I mean? Like if you got to right. go keeping an eye and bubble on your bumper and your altitude and trying to just keep your momentum going forward while you're like at the same time trying to yeah. come up. But then sometimes you do. You need all the jam to come up sometimes. But Yeah. Okay, uh, go on. Yeah, it ended up being fine and we... As it started getting steep, you cleared the top. Yeah. And then it and stopped was being an issue. At so the point I, where I was like, eh, you're getting a little far behind. We, I saw it kind of like level, yeah. so I wasn't, then I yeah, didn't say anything. I stopped being worried. I didn't want to like raise any alarms or anything. No. It was all good. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel alarmed, but I was trying to like plan <laughs> my way out of a similar situation in the future. I think you really are here though, by the way. I don't think you're over there. That's a very good point. Let's, are you an auto XY? No. Cool. Let's get you to where you belong. I feel like pretty good about where I am relative to Argus right now. <laughs> I was not looking at DGL map for a while. Uh, that's funny. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I wonder if you should, how, uh, uh -huh. how much is Argus moving right now? Is it moving still, uh, still pretty yeah, good, I guess. Yeah, still moving. Oh, there's more rocks coming up. I was just thinking if, the, <laughs> if we're going to hit a big nodule field, we should duck over to the right, but I think we'll be, looks like some more rocks up ahead. Yeah, I think you know, it should flatten out a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, even if up here, if, if this seems like an area, we might settle out and I think we can find a rock. Yeah. We're wow. going to be about 50, we're still going to be 50 meters with from settling out, but we can do a more on the fly sort of grab too. If okay. you see a rock that you like. Yeah, we yeah I think we're slowing down a little bit now, yeah. Um, 
So like in this rock field up ahead here. Yeah. I think if you get like nicely stretched out and then yeah. settle in, we'll sort of catch up as we're doing our. Yeah, collection. I think that's. So for timing reference, the time that I called the first move at one knot for about a kilometer, it was twenty-two, twenty-two. Okay. So it's taken us an hour and twenty-ish minutes for okay. this whole, whole, whole evolution, one point two kilometers. Awesome. How, how does the starboard box look for rock storage? Do we have any? Is it both large rocks in the starboard box? Um, yeah, F is looking pretty full, but okay. A and B are completely open, and we okay. can probably fit something else in E. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll keep. If you do, you think you can see what you need up from up here? Yeah. Yeah. This should be fine. This. Uh, I mean, just to give you, or I can look. I can look from lower down. I was just thinking about giving you the most options. No, here. I think that's okay. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Uh, let's see. I feel like this is this is a good position. Like this is the direction that Argus will eventually swing. So. Yep. Look around here, see what we can find. Yeah, there's a pile over here. Okay. Maybe. Josh, you want to get this? Sure. Yeah. Make do it, it nice and efficient. Yeah. I see one that looks quite good. Which one are you thinking? Uh, to one, the left of the sponge. Two. It's kind of big. Yeah, yeah. Those those two yeah. look great. I was thinking maybe. Let's see. I have to look at the lasers. Maybe this one behind the sponge is what I'm thinking. Behind the sponge. Okay. Okay, uh, that one's kind of flat. Yeah. Um, there's also up like one o'clock of the sponge. Sitting, it's sort of proud. It's sitting on top of a flow. This one. Yes, that one. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that that could work. All right. Image it if we have time. Yep. Uh, brittle star on nope. the bottom. <laughs> there was. Uh, do you want to redo? Uh, you want to redo on that? Let's let's redo. Yeah. Right. Oh wow! Gives you an That's idea of how uh, yeah, alterable. These Josh, are. do the buttons on the GUI now stick if you hold them? Sometimes they get laggy. It means you got to reboot things. Is that one too big? Um, it might be, but maybe it'll break also. Uh, oh, that's really flat. Yeah, maybe not. Um, what about... That one right, that guy right... These oh. under... I mean, those are a bit far, right? But uh, like I'm these wondering guys? behind... The, Even uh, further? Yeah. Those there. If you can reach them. Yeah. I think that's maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll drop my grip force a little bit here. That oh, looks like a change my grip rock. force down to seven. Can you come wide for a sec. Okay. All right. I'm gonna zoom in. Also, some somewhat flat, but um, I think I think everything here is probably going to be pretty al altered. Um, all right, good grabs, stow it. What sample number is this? This will be sam sample number one two two. Okay, sample salvo. Yep. Heard A and B are open, is that right? A and B are open, correct. Okay. It's gonna go in Bravo.
rotate it. There it is. Right. Great. And our last Niskin sample is is number one. Number one. It's just a little hard when I can't. You just pan to the right just for a sec. All right, thanks. I just don't like to go in that deep without like being able to follow myself in. You're muted too, I can't hear you. Number one. Okay. Good samples. Okay. Um, which is where are we headed with this next move, Kate? We will be heading due north, uh, well not quite due north, bearing 002 uh, towards waypoint 12. It's about 160 meters away. Um, ship has just settled out on his heading move and is holding station, so... And are we going to want... Um, is this exploration pace now, like point two, point three? Point two. Okay. Yep. Unless, Steve, you have uh, something else in mind. That sounds good. Why don't you yeah, put in one big step to get us there? All right. Yeah, okay. I can do that. Absolutely. Okay. I'm ready. Let's move. Bridge, nav. Can we move 150 meters bearing zero, zero, 002? at 0 0.2 knots. Thank you. Steve, I feel like I need my own telestrator up here. That way I can tell you what rocks I see or indicate when I've seen them. You can be like, this rock. I'll be like, this rock? <laughs> You're pretty good at describing them, though, Gabby. That's why I, I, have, that's why I have a laser pointer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel <laughs> That's true. I feel like for the last few, I've been like, you know, the rock. And then Steve, like, reads my mind, and he's like, this one? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> yep. So I don't know how that happens, but... And maybe that is the technology that we need. <laughs> maybe we have it already. I think, uh, yeah, 
probably a little bit easier than third arm technology to get you that telestrator stylus. Third what? Third arm technology. You're going to need a third arm to draw. Oh, yeah, and a super long one, too, so I can point at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, I have a third arm. Like, it's at the bottom of the ocean right now. <laughs> what happened to the, we used to have, like, the stick. The yeah, the stick. stick of pointing. Yeah. I don't think still, it's gone anywhere. It's, it's still, still there. there. It's sort of danger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> ah, I have long arms. This is Ooh, good for me. Careful with that. <laughs> I think the first rev of that was somebody put, you know, those little pencils you can stack on top of one another? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like this. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's not good. We can do better. We have a lot of technology on this ship. We could get a laser pointer. That's true. They, they disappear really, into don't the really screens. Work, yeah. Oh, Roger. We've definitely tried that. Yeah. If you were wondering what those little cables that we pulled right after our rock sample were, um, and those are our Niskin samples. So every time we've taken a geological sample and collected a rock, rock we can also we pull that little cable. You can typically see it um, on the quad view or the satellite feed three, um, but we there's a little like spring that closes on top of a, a Niskin bottle, and then we can bring that water sample up to the surface. So it gives us some extra information about where we collected that rock.